Hi, good evening. Uh, today we're going to discuss uh, F.W. Taylor, Frederick Winslow Taylor, uh, the pioneer, as per student request, uh, the pioneer of uh, scientific management, the father of scientific management. And why father? Because he was the first guy. And scientific management because uh, he was an engineer and he introduced his uh, engineering knowledge into management. Uh, and later on it's adopted by many industries which we'll be discussing today. Uh, let's make it very simple and make it very easy easy to understand. Although he worked on uh, processes but uh, let me give you a layman example, a very simple example. You know, uh, scientific, manage scientific management is like removing uh, all non-scientific thing. Like all tukka management, all guest management, all chutki management. For example, you're preparing egg, food, any tea, uh, like you're preparing anything. And you know what that we say, pinch of salt, the chutki bar namak, chutki bar chini, this pinch of uh, salt, this is non-scientific thing. Like it's the, it's the guest management, is the tukka management, uh, which we do. Because if it is scientific, it should be in milligrams, grams, teaspoon, tablespoon. But like unfortunately, not only in kitchen, like everywhere we use this chutki management thing in 21st century. And this guy, Frederick Winslow Taylor, he provided this scientific approach, this Taylor approach, Taylorism, in uh, 19th century, the beginning of 20th century. He provided this approach, this Taylorism, this scientific management. Before F.W. Taylor, the industries and workers had no scientific management techniques. So they had the same guest management. Let's take the example of a steel mill. Uh, everybody, each and every worker had their own process. And when they had their own process and their own guesses, uh, there was no standardization and when there was no standardization, there was no efficiency at all. As I said, everybody had their own process. Now what Taylor did, he broke the whole task. As I said, he was the pioneer of scientific management. He broke the whole task into subtasks and then that subtask into sub sub -task, and then sub sub -task into sub sub like this is micro designing of the job, micro processing. He broke the whole task into small, into uh, micro pieces and then what he did is that engineering time and motion study he brought that stopwatch and then he took thousands of observation for each and every piece of their task for example is breaking the whole task is just like like uh, breaking the metal this is the complete task so he broke it into smaller pieces one two three four then he analyzed each and every piece through this as I said time and motion study and stopwatch and once each and every piece was analyzed and became efficient, he merged, integrated all those small pieces and made the best way, the most efficient way, or I must say the scientific way. Now this is scientific management and then this is adopted throughout the organization. And once this method was adopted by everyone, the standardization, efficiency and labor productivity obviously that increased. Scientific management is basically a technique of breaking the whole task, whole process into you know subtask or at le or the least possible unit, like micro designing of the job, micro processing, and uh, like with the intention to regulate the whole process or the most efficient process to accomplish a particular task, and at the same time to so that the workers could be trained to perform the specialized sequence of motion. Like this is the ultimate objective of uh, scientific management. After years of research, he gave, Taylor gave uh, principles of scientific management, four principles of scientific management. The first one was the replace the guesswork. As I said, this guess management, this tukka management, replace the guesswork with the scientific management techniques. And uh, second one is the selection of employees. And not only selection, but uh, we'll have to train and develop each and every worker rather than leaving them to train themselves. Like there should be no trial and error thing. We'll have to train our workers. Uh, the third one is make sure that these scientific management processes are followed. And the fourth one is that while planning, managers will have to make sure to adopt these scientific management techniques like while planning. And workers, they have to actually implement it. Like we don't want our workers to think over it. It is the job of the managers to plan and apply, the, and, uh, like, uh, apply these scientific management techniques while planning. Workers have to do like what is commanded, what is provided by the management. Uh, this approach was adopted by many industries like the very famous one the famous company was Henry oh, sorry Ford Motors adopted by Henry Ford and later on not only in industries adopted by families and household as well 
approach of uh, this tailor tailorism was very attractive and as i said it's adopted by many industries but uh, at the same time uh, there were some drawbacks and limitations also of this approach it's a uh, boredom and monotony like due to this uh, repetition of work and due to this over specialization boredom is one of the major limitations and second is all the five factors of uh, job satisfaction are absent like uh, skill variety task identity there's no task significance autonomy feedback nothing is there like all five factors of job satisfaction are absent and the human becomes just a small cog small screw in the machine there's no importance of human and uh, one more thing is uh, that dehumanizing and due to this dehumanizing element uh, the labor union they started complaining and they started protesting against tailorism which led to investigation by us congress at that time uh, maybe in examination you might be asked to write down the principles of scientific management or the drawbacks of scientific management or maybe you ask both uh, anyway thank you for listening and you are a very good one